Hey everybody, my name is Kristen Hankins. I am one of the leaders with Usborne Books and More. I'm also a homeschooling mom to five kids and I've been homeschooling for a long time now. My oldest is going into eighth grade and I kind of actually started when he was three, but I only count the years back to kindergarten. So anyways, I want to share with you some of my favorite books for homeschooling. I have worked really hard to narrow down my choices. In fact, I'm sure as you're browsing, you're gonna notice that a lot of our books are going out of stock so fast. And that's because they are phenomenal and they are excellent educational resources. So they've been in high demand and that's amazing. It's actually gonna help you with your selections tonight instead of having 20 space books to choose from. You have already had your, your list narrowed down a little bit for you. So um, I see that as a good thing and I have narrowed down my favorites to a really short list. I'm gonna go ahead and share those with you now. Um, these, the books that I'm sharing with you as my favorites are books that will work for any age pretty much. Um, I'm going to start with science. The first one here is Getting Started with Science. This is one of our newest books. And since we in my house have been off of school, we haven't dug into it um, that much yet. But I can already tell that it's going to be a really fun resource. Now, my kids range from 1 to almost 13. That's right. I'm going to have a teenager this year. And I find that I can buy books that kind of are geared towards the younger crowd because my oldest can always dig deeper. If it's a book that has internet links, then he can um, use those to learn even more about the topic. We can get books from the library so that he can continue learning more and more. Um, and he can do a lot of extra reading on his own if needed. If there's something, you know, if we're doing science and the topic really takes hold of him, he can turn it into a research product, project and he can do experiments. Um, it's harder to bring the, the, the smaller kids up to harder material. So that is my rule of thumb for choosing um, books, like how hard they are or how easy they are. Um, the Amazing Discoveries of 100 Brilliant Scientists, I think is also a must have. Sometimes when we teach science or history, we get caught up in wanting to teach facts, how to do this, this is what happened. Um, but you can't do that without recognizing the incredible people along the way who have made these discoveries or who were parts of these big events. If you were interested in what this scientist did, again, you can turn it into a research project. You can look up YouTube videos about him. You can look for websites that have more information. You can order books or see if your library has books. So those are my top two science picks for you. Now, if you have other subjects that you want to teach this year, we have books for that. We have science books for everything from bugs and butterflies, nature topics, to periodic table, we have space, we've got human body, whatever you wanna learn about in science, you name it, we probably have it. Um, moving on to history, I have two main picks for you for history. I think that the World History Encyclopedia is a necessary part of every home library, homeschooling or not. Now, this is the smaller version, and it is sold out right now, but the good news is that our mammoth one, the hardcover, really super nice, not going to um, wear down very well with use. This is, I've had this book for seven years, okay, and that's the only flaw. So, the paperback books do hold up very well, but um, that larger one for $39.99 is the one that's in stock right now. I absolutely recommend getting it. It's going to get a beating over the years, especially if you're just starting out. These encyclopedias are gonna carry you through high school. It's not like you will only be able to use these for a couple of years. Um, you can pick a time period for your school year that you want to study, and you can just spend um, you know, a week. We generally would spend a week on just one or two pages, depending on the topic. And we would read some of it. We would not read this whole thing in a day. We would maybe read a couple paragraphs over here. Maybe there's a craft or an activity or something that you can draw to go along with that. You can use the quick links 
or there are instructions in the front of the book for using our internet links. So one day we would use the internet links and play a game. Another day we would um, be looking on National Geographic or we'd watch a video about it. Um, so you can actually use this just as your history spine and you can get books from the library on um, subtopics. Like if you're studying ancient Egypt, you can um, search your library for ancient Egypt books. You will find plenty at your library to supplement um, that history spine. Next, we actually, as long as I have been a consultant and as long as we have had this set, we only just added it to our home library um, this year. And it's how many? 10? Yep, 10 books. We have the Vikings, the Stone Age, Romans, the Maya, the Iron Age, Ancient Greeks, Egyptians, Digging Up History, the Celts, and Castles. And this is one that um, would make an excellent... Um, supplement as well because when you use your encyclopedia and you study the Greeks you can pull your Greek beginner nonfiction book out of your set it's such a great value $45 for 10 books and um, I again I like the age group that these are geared towards because you can go deeper with older kids you can supplement for them through the library. Um, sometimes I have my older kids read one of these and then write a summary or tell me a summary out loud. They can draw a picture of what they learned and doing those activities just help make it more real for them, helps them um, remember what they just did. Everything doesn't have to be worksheets. You don't have to have a worksheet in order to learn more. Um, I wanted to tell you two more history recommendations that I couldn't find because our books are spread all over our house. Um, if you could not swing the $40 on the encyclopedia, again, I highly, highly recommend it. But if it's just not in the budget for you, definitely check out a short history of the world or um, history of the world in 100 pictures. Those are smaller books. They don't have as much information per topic or you know, along the timeline. But what I like about those books is that they, like the encyclopedia, they go in chronological order. So they start at the beginning of time and they work their way to the present, which I think is the best way to teach history. That way kids aren't trying to reorganize. Oh, I learned about this famous person, but what does that have to do with the Civil War? Or, you know, they're not trying to reorganize all of these names and dates and vague memories that they have in their head. Um, so I like to go in chronological order. Even if you're not starting at the beginning of time, you can pick up wherever you need to and you can go forward from there. So those are my other history recommendations for you.